about the things in life that are just catching, that are just catching. We're heading up to 19 and a half before 7 o'clock here on The Morning Brew on CNC3 and the cnc3.co.tt. In this segment, we put the spotlight on World Cancer Day. It's the day when awareness activities um, take place to remind people that uh, cancer does not have to be a death sentence, that people can survive cancer, that families can recover from the trauma of dealing with a loved one who is going through the rigors of cancer. We have in with us this morning the chairman of the Trinidad and Tobago Cancer Society, Dr. Ashanti Leblanc. Good morning to you, Dr. Leblanc. Good morning, Jesse May. Morning to Trinidad and Tobago. And happy World Cancer Day to you. Well, I would say same to you, yes. yes. <laughs> happy yes. World Cancer Day. Yes. It's, it's apropos because we both lost someone very close to us um, who would have, you know, succumbed to cancer. In my case, it would have been my father um, about 10 years ago, and it would have been your grandmother many years ago. You do your homework, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that basically, that basically, you know, got you on the path to sort of switch your attention uh, to wanting to, 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 you know, to bring your skills to bear to help those who are dealing with cancer have a better quality of life, yes? You see, Jesse May, um, my grandmother was a, a big, a staunch feminist and wanted, wanted to empower women and especially, um, to, to break those barriers when it came to the um, social determinants of health and access of care. Um, so she was a real fighter for that. So when she passed, I mean, all of us in the family, but me especially, I think I decided somehow in her name, we have to do something for women, for people that live in underdeveloped situations, economic situations, and against cancer particularly, yes. Mm. Um, some, there is an estimation that one out of six people worldwide has died from cancer, which is more than HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined. One of every six persons on this planet. Can you imagine? That's incredible. Yeah, can you and, imagine? And even yeah, though we've 10 learned, million, 10 million people. Yeah, even though we've learned so much about the different cancers and have come up with the technology and the treatments for them, whether, whether using traditional medicine or modern technologically informed medicine, the thing is, cancer is still, it's still whipping us. Our, you know, there is something in our bodies that keeps saying, Hi, I'm going to switch on now, and your life is going to change forever. Jesse, May, what happens is that even though we've had um, huge advances in the field of cancer, cancer is a lifestyle disease. So along with that, if we look at how our societies have progressed, our lifestyles have not improved from an elemental standpoint in that we have been on a rat race. We wake up early, go to sleep late. We drink too much alcohol. We smoke, we vape, we don't exercise. We have huge amounts of stress and we don't cope with our stress correctly. So while we've made advances when it comes to cancer research and cancer treatment, on the other hand, the population, the world population has not made advances in really getting it right when it comes to our lifestyle. And that is important to understand. But that message of, of prevention and that message of, you know, taking care of yourself, somehow it doesn't resonate with, that, with as many people as it should. And it's only when you get that grim conversation in the doctor's office that many people, you know, it's like they hit a brick wall and they realize, oh my gosh, I could have, should have, and didn't. You know, and you, you just hit it on the head. And that's the thing. Everyone used to think that cancer was, it happened to somebody else, or it was in the family, or you worked it with asbestos, but nobody thought that cancer is actually partially owing to our behaviors, to your personal lifestyle choices. So we have to constantly remind everyone and re-educate, and I say re-educate because I don't think it, it did not um, resonate the first time, so we have to hit it again. And we have to remind and remind and remind. And so this year, Jesse, with the theme, I am and I will, 
I think we should all just take stock and be accountable and just make one conscious decision to spread the word on how we can prevent, how you can make better choices when it comes to your lifestyle. And those have a huge, huge positive impact when it comes to cancer. When we began our conversation, you talked about the fact that we're basically uh, rats on a treadmill in the rat race, uh, not eating well, not sleeping enough, and uh, basically not dealing with our stress either. For people who have lower incomes, that is their reality, and they can't see beyond that. They've got to do what they've got to do, whether it's working three and four jobs in order to literally keep clothes on their backs and a roof hole over their heads and food in their children's bellies. So how can they, in those situations, make the changes that you're recommending? It's almost impossible for them. Even if they want to get better quality food, they can't afford it because it's too expensive. And that's just a starter. And, and you see, that's the thing. So this is not only about you or me as a person and an individual saying, I'm going to wake up this morning and I'm going to do yoga and I'm going to take deep breaths. This is about politics. This is about political um, legislation. This is about our leaders also making that conscious change. This is about our leaders worldwide and nationally taking stock and saying, let us break those social inequities to health care. Let us bring it all to one level. I, I mean, this is a big topic, Jesse Me. It's not going to happen. I'm not in a, a fairy. It's a, it's a fairy tale to believe it will change this year. But at least we need to let our leaders know and we need to constantly remind them and re-educate them that we have to make the change. And you know, cancer does not discriminate. It doesn't care who you are. The difference is, depending on how much money you have and the social the social inequities of healthcare allow for different outcome. And we have to change that. And this is what we hoped COVID would have done to the world. But it, it did it for a while and then we saw it didn't do it for a while because we still went back to the inequities of everything if we look at the vaccine race. So we have to constantly as individuals, we have to stand up, you know, we have to let it be heard and our leaders have to take that charge and help us to allow those of lower social economic statuses to really achieve, get access to health care. Uh, and be empowered to look after. Yes. Dr. LeBlanc, as you make that point, and, and you did raise the issue of COVID-19 and the fact that it has really blown up this, this issue of the inequities and the quality of health care that's afforded to the haves and, and the don't have so much. Is, I mean, it, 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 it seems as though we can't find a way to fix that or to change that unless the haves decide to have a little less and give those who don't have so much just a little bit more but somehow it's it's not working out that way that's a huge philosophical debate um to my mind um you know i studied in cuba and and when you look at um, i'm not saying everybody sh should be socialists or if you want to call it communist but as far as i'm concerned it was socialism but po the political minds have to come together and decide how is it we can truly look at the health of our population. Because the health of our population, Jesse May, is indeed the wealth of a country. There's no doubt about that. If you do not have a healthy population, you could pretend all you want, you do not have a wealthy population in terms of country. And so, I mean, I understand that it's very idealistic, but maybe we just have to all come together and figure it out. So all these conferences, congresses, conventions that they have, we have to let our voices be heard. You know, it's the same thing as all those big topics such as climate change, everything that affects us and we're seeing it affect us as people worldwide. We have to ask our leaders to help us to break those barriers and make it accessible. You know, and, and you know, to the Habs, if they're out there listening, maybe they also need to sway the political view so that they have not can get a little more and that's something that we have to look at as well that, that the haves have to have a heart because they also have power you know like it or not that's how the world works you know with regard to COVID-19 it's had another impact as well um, in terms of how uh, those who are battling with cancer would have had to re receive their treatment and they would have been even more vulnerable to possible COVID-19 infection. Um, their families would have had to, I guess, embrace extreme measures 
to protect that particular loved one. Same goes for people who would have been on dialysis, um, whether through kidney disease or lupus or what have you, Dr. LeBlanc. You know, Jesse May, you're so right. COVID-19 impacted greatly. From the simple, I cannot hug you while you're suffering, I can't give you that human touch, to not being able to access medication, to having to stay home because of your risk and your immune system being depressed. But I must um, commend all of the organizations involved with cancer patients, cancer treatment, cancer support, because we all came together and we helped where we could. Yes, there were little deficiencies when it came to delivery of cancer care sometimes in the public sector, but it was not as bad as, it, as people thought it would have been. So I must commend we, everybody that worked together because we, 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 we saw the problem and we dealt with it. It was dealt with and I, I commend all of them in all the RHAs, all of us. I mean, we pulled together. When you heard of somebody that needed a snack, when you heard of somebody that didn't have access, when you heard of somebody that, you know, and the doctors made decisions on how we could change the treatment so as not to put the patients more at risk. So it was a very valuable um, effort. We're still pushing forward, but COVID-19 did impact. There's no doubt. It did impact and it's still impacting on cancer care delivery. Dr. Nebla, we're going to have to wrap it there for now, but I just wanted to salute you and all the medical professionals, whether uh, doctors, nurses, or the uh, ancillary people who support you, salute you for continuing you know, to do your duty uh, in the middle of COVID. Thank you so much for making a difference in people's lives, the families who've been dealing with cancer. We salute you this morning on this World Cancer Day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We take a break. We'll be back with more on The Morning Brew.